Good evening. Good evening. We welcome you to Pope St. John the 23rd Catholic Church, and especially to any visitors or newcomers to our parish. We welcome you to our community. The announcements for this week are Christmas Mass schedule is as follows. Christmas Eve Mass, 4 p.m. Christmas carols, 4.30 p.m. English Mass, 7 p.m. Vietnamese, and 10.30 p.m. Bilingual, English, and Samoan. Christmas Day, 7.45 a.m. Vietnamese, 9.45 a.m. English, and 4 p.m. Vietnamese. All contributions received after Sunday, December 31st, will be posted in January 2023. Thank you all for supporting our parish. Please take a bulletin home for more information. Father Pat will hear confessions in English and Spanish during the Monday 7 to 8 evenings, Holy Hour on Mondays of Advent, except December 12th. Oh, sorry, that was for St. John's. Um, please make this announcement to the religious education program students and ask them to pass it on to their parents. The Mass today is being celebrated by Father Pat and Deacon Mike. In today's readings, we learn the following lesson. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, risen from the dead. He is the King of glory. Please join me in praying the St. Michael prayer. This prayer is being said for the right to life as taught by our Catholic faith. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world to the ruin of souls. Prayer for the int of the intercession of Saint Pope Saint John the Twenty Third. Almighty God, who Pope St. John the 23rd gave to the whole world the shining example of a good shepherd. Grant through his intercession that, with his same joy, we may spread the fullness of Christian charity. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Just a reminder to, to turn off all cell phones during Mass. Now please rise and take a moment to greet your fellow parishioners. Please join us for our entrance hymn, number 63, Ready the Way. <clears throat>
welcome as we gather for our liturgy on this fourth Sunday of Advent. We continue now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your, your spirit. spirit. God is with us. God is in our midst. In Jesus, God is one with us. Jesus is our model of how we are to live. He has come to share his life with us and to lead us to our Heavenly Father. May his word, his gift, and the Eucharist transform us, enable us to become flesh of his flesh and blood of his blood. Let us turn to God, who even in our weakness will always be with us, his people. We ask the Lord for pardon and peace for our failures. Lord Jesus, you are the promise of Emmanuel, God with us. Come, King. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are our Savior. You come to forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you guide us to the darkness of sin, God our Father. Lord, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. For forth we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the nether world, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The gospel about his son descended from David according to the flesh, but established as son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness through resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all Gentiles, among whom are you also, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that his child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading, did you think that King Ahaz sounded like a model of faith when he told Isaiah that he would not put the Lord God to the test by asking for a sign? Isaiah had told him to ask for a sign from God so that in a sense he would have a greater confidence that God would be with him to protect him and his kingdom. He answered Isaiah, but Isaiah, but excuse me, but Ahaz didn't ask for a sign and so the prophet said, God will give you this sign. I will not ask for a sign, the king had said. It sounded like an expression of faith. But his words were covering 
a lack of faith. He was afraid the enemy was going to attack his country, conquer Jerusalem, and put himself and his family to death. So he had already made a tentative alliance with a neighboring country to come to his aid. He would rely upon military might, not on God. His words were covering his lack of faith, lack of trust in God. Isaiah wanted him to place his trust in God to, in a sense, renew the covenant to say that people would be faithful to God and they would follow God's way. But the king has decided on another plan, another way. Unfortunately, he lets his fears, his lack of faith, guide his decision. He will trust in military might, not in God's providential care. And it was then that Isaiah said, God will provide a sign for you. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call him Emmanuel. God is not offering armies and weapons, but the birth of a child. And as the king's wife gives birth to this child, people are aware God would not send a child if he was going to allow the kingdom to be conquered by the Assyrians and the, a royal family assassinated by them. It was a sign to people God is with us. God has not abandoned us. And hopefully the king also at that point began to realize God is with us. We will trust in God. We see that prophecy more than fulfilled when Jesus is born. And the prophecy describes Jesus, born of a virgin. Now if you were King Ahaz in that moment, what would you have done? made an alliance with a friendly kingdom to safeguard your kingdom, something certainly very practical, something very concrete, something you could see and count on. The alliance would bring military might to defend the kingdom. Or would you trust in God's promise that despite all the visible threats against the kingdom, God would keep his promise, he would protect the kingdom, that promise he made long ago. In the Gospel, we see Joseph also faced a dilemma. How should he respond to this kind of serious shock of learning that Mary was pregnant? She was his intended spouse, and he knew that he was not the father. What was he going to do? If he publicly denounced her, she could be stoned to death. We might also say, think of the feelings of Mary. Would Joseph believe her if she said, well, yes, she's with child, but it's by the power of God's Holy Spirit. Joseph was a righteous or just man, faithful to God's law, which would require him to separate himself from Mary. That night after he had made his decision that he would separate himself from her quietly, an angel of the Lord came to him in a dream and revealed to him that Mary was with child by the power of God. No other man was involved he was to take Mary as his wife and to name the child Jesus, which means God saves, or God saves his people. And by naming the child, Joseph was to become the legal father of the child, and the child, Jesus, became legally a son of David, descended through, David, through Joseph's royal connection with the family. Isaiah's prophecy was being fulfilled. Emmanuel, God with us. Mary and Joseph nicknamed the child, in a sense, Emmanuel. And we hear Paul in the second reading also calling Jesus the Son of God and the Son of David. In Joseph, we see a model for us with faith. He recognized the dream and the message of an angel, not as just an ordinary dream or even a special dream. It was the word of God coming to him. And Joseph acts on it immediately. He did not hem and haw and say, well, I wonder if this really happened. What would this mean for me? What, how is it going to affect my life? He welcomed Mary immediately as his wife and took her into his home. He trusted in God's providential care for himself, for Mary, and for the child that was to be born. At times, we all face kind of temptation similar to that of Ahaz, to rely upon our own resources, our own abilities, 
our plan to find happiness and security. We, in a sense, hang on to what the world would offer us. and We find it difficult to let go, say, of our plans, to trust in what God is calling us to do, how he wants us to treat others. We, in a way, can be very understanding of King Ahaz. Advent calls us to trust in the Lord who is coming to rescue us with his saving presence, calls us to celebrate Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And have we taken time during these three weeks of Advent that come up to today to pause and reflect how we are preparing to welcome Jesus, how he comes into our lives, how we are to live as his disciples, welcoming him at Christmas. And how might the Lord come to us? If he comes in unexpected ways, will we be ready to recognize him and welcome him? Could it be that the Lord bless is blessing us, revealing himself to us, is in our midst, but we do not recognize his presence, his love and his care, perhaps in family and good friends, or his actions in our lives? The long-awaited Messiah, the light of the world, the desire of the nations, comes to us in the people around us, in the events that happen each day, the normal circumstances of life. The Lord is present. Sometimes it's hardest to see God in the people who are familiar to us, or to see and recognize God in our own lives, at times how he is touching us with his love and his kindness, and how he is calling us to reach out to others with love and kindness. As we prepare to see and welcome the infant, his birth at Bethlehem, the Lord would also guide us to see his presence more clearly in our daily lives today. Jesus came to us in a very human way, a small infant born of a poor couple. We see him much later as a man going about preaching. Not everyone recognized him as a great prophet or as the son of God. Yet he was revealing God's life and God's love through his ministry, and in a very special way, in his death and resurrection. With faith and love, Mary and the disciples came to recognize that he was God, revealing and sharing God's life and love with us. Paul experienced that presence of God, even though he most likely never saw him with his physical eyes, but he came to believe that Jesus was the Son of God, the son of David, the Savior, sent by our Heavenly Father to call us into a relationship with him and through him into a deeper relationship with God as our loving Father. Ahaz would not ask for a sign, but God sent him a sign in the infant whose birth we are preparing to celebrate as he comes to us newborn in Bethlehem, but in a way also newly born, more fully born in our own lives as we would welcome him now at this Christmas. Today's psalm refrain, let the Lord enter, he is king of glory, reminds us in a sense, we are to let the Lord enter into our hearts that he might guide our lives. He comes this Christmas to reveal himself in a fuller way as we would welcome him by our prayers of faith and trust, inviting him to come and share his life and his light with us that we might experience his promise of love and light, and that we in turn, as we welcome the Lord, also share the Lord, his light and his love with others by the way we respond to them. Let us stand renewing our faith in God. <coughs> 
prepare to celebrate Christmas. I believe in one God, Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all the ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial of the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, who suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended in heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and give the glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adorned and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess what baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord Jesus, our Savior, hear the cries of your people. Replace in your care all our, all our loved ones, all those in need, materially and spiritually, all those caught up in violence and war. Trusting in you, we bring you our needs and our intentions. For all who lead the church, for humility in authority and perseverance in prayer. <coughs> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family of nations, for peace and respect for relations among all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and children in difficult circumstances, for families separated from each other. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering poverty, homelessness, and serious illness, for those without hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of believers and witnesses, for strong faith, lively hope, and deepening love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may enjoy the fullness of God's heavenly glory. Let us pray to the Lord. our own personal intentions for these and all the prayers entered into our book of prayers and for those that are held in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, our Father, you give us your Son, Jesus, as the supreme gift. In him and through him, all our expectations will be fulfilled now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is Come, Lord, Maranatha, and it's the, the verses are week four, week four, <clears throat> number 66.
pray, sisters and brothers, that our prayer and sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Lemis Uncelli et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus, Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, his assistant bishops, Eusebio and Frank, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's demand, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <laughs> Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the kingdom and the power and the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And you are the Spirit. Of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be free.
Let us pray. <coughs> Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our recessional hymn is number 558, Glory and Praise to Our God. <laughs> Like to 